In the early 1990s, Kiwi brothers David and Andrew Akers, along with scientist Dwayne van der Sluis, developed something called the Zorb. Kelly Hamana is a manager at Zorb Rotorua. You're brought up to, to invent things, you're brought up to make things, you know, things like that. And, and I think it's just a part of our culture to, to try new things, try crazy things, and, and, and Zorbing is just part of it. Weighing 90 kilograms, the Zorb consists of two plastic spheres connected by around 500 strings. When in motion, a two-foot air cushion between the inner and outer spheres prevents Zorbonauts from touching the ground. Initially tested in 1994, within four years, the world's first commercial operation, Zorb Rotorua, opened just over 200 kilometers southeast of Auckland. There are two types of Zorbing, wet and dry. In wet or hydrozorbing, the inner sphere is filled with around 50 litres of water, and up to three people can travel inside. In dry zorbing, the zorbonaut's hands, feet and waist are harnessed in a starfish position. Although Zorb Rotorua is a purely recreational site, there are plans to develop two parallel tracks, so in future, racing can occur. The concept is now franchised around the world, with sites in Australia, Thailand, Japan, the UK and the US. But with Zorbs costing anywhere from 10 to 20,000 New Zealand dollars, will it ever challenge Bungie? Nowadays we're pushing, on a good day, 300 people, 350 people down a hill, so it's, it's quite popular. Um, and we like to think that we're going to we're the biggest competitor for bungee. Now. And for those still concerned about safety, I think it's really, really safe. Um, you know, you're in a nice big bubble. You're in there with water, sliding around. Unless you go with someone you don't like, I think you'd be pretty safe. 